My name is Dan Rogers. I'm a specialist registrar in gastroenterology at University Hospitals of Leicester. We're going to try and cover everything you need to know about abdominal x-rays in five minutes. Please pause the presentation at any point to look at the x-rays presented in more detail. We're going to develop a strategy for looking at abdominal films, learn to recognise normal findings and use this knowledge to identify abnormal findings and recognise some of the common abnormalities that are seen on abdominal x-rays. Once we've seen what a normal x-ray looks like, we will look at the changes seen in colitis, constipation, bowel obstruction and volvulus. As with everything in medicine, it's important to have a routine and stick to this as it will help to ensure you do not miss any findings. Once you have confirmed the x-rays of the correct patient, you should stand back and take in the whole x-ray and notice any obvious findings. I would suggest then that you go through your routine. I tend to work backwards and start with looking to see if there is any gas in the rectum and then work proximally around where I would expect to see large bowel and then small bowel. Then I look for a shadow where the kidneys should be and trace down the ureters to the bladder before looking for the upper abdominal organs and finally look at the bones that are visible. The bowel gas pattern seen should give you a lot of information and remember that gas appears black on x-rays. You should always expect to see some air in the stomach in two or three loops of small bowel and almost always in the sigmoid colon and rectum. Seeing more gas than this may suggest the presence of bowel obstruction. The next important step is to know the difference between the appearance of large and small bowel. The large bowel tends to sit around the edge of the abdomen and the haustral markings do not extend the whole way across the lumen, whereas small bowel tends to sit more centrally and the valvuli extend across the whole lumen, giving the appearance of a line going across the lumen. The labelled examples of normal x-rays show you the position of most of the intra-abdominal structures. You can see air within the bowel which shows up black with denser structures such as the liver and bones showing up white. It is important to remember how much bone can be seen on abdominal x-rays as it's not uncommon to diagnose a crush fracture of the vertebrae or a fractured neck of femur unexpectedly on an abdominal film. The changes seen in colitis are the same for both infective and inflammatory causes of colitis and in this x-ray you can see thickening of the left colon. You can see a thick white line running along the side of the bowel lumen and this is edema in the colonic wall. You can see that this continues into the transverse colon which has dipped down into the middle of the abdomen. This is an x-ray that gastroenterologists fear to see as it means that medical treatment for colitis has failed. In this x-ray you can see that the whole sigmoid colon is distended to a width of over 6 cm which is the cutoff for diagnosing toxic megacolon. The sigmoid colon here appears as an upside down u-shape and you can then see the descending colon on the patient's left with a very thick colonic wall. The surgeons need to be contacted urgently regarding this patient as they almost certainly require an urgent total colectomy. In this x-ray you can see a dappled or pixelated appearance in the ascending colon on the patient's right. It's unusual to see solid stool in this area as the colon works to turn liquid stool from the small bowel into formed stool by the time it reaches the rectum. This patient has left sided colitis and this can result in disturbance to gut motility which leads to proximal constipation. In patients with left sided colitis the inflammation in the left colon will not improve until this proximal constipation has been cleared with laxative therapy. This x-ray shows small bowel obstruction. The valvulae extend the whole way across the bowel confirming that this is dilated small bowel and there is no large bowel visible which confirms this is small bowel obstruction. Large bowel obstruction can also give dilated small bowel in the presence of an incompetent IC valve that allows reflux of air backwards from the cecum into the small bowel. Large bowel obstruction without small bowel dilatation is at higher risk of perforation as it suggests a competent IC valve and therefore is a closed loop with constantly increasing pressure. Not all obstructions are as dramatic as the last example but in this one you can see six loops of small bowel. You know this is small bowel as you can see the valvulae extending the whole way across the lumen. Again there is no air visible in the large bowel. This lady had an obstructed femoral hernia which was successfully managed surgically. Sigmoid volvulus tends to occur in the elderly population and results from a twist in the sigmoid colon. As a result you can see an inverted U-shaped appearance which is known as the coffee bean sign with the apex pointing towards the right upper quadrant.
Clinically, the abdomen will be massively distended, and as a consequence, you often get a poor quality film in which you do not see the coffee bean sign so clearly. Treatment is passing a flatus tube per rectum beyond the twist point to decompress the bowel above and thus allow the twist to untwist. Cecal volvulus is a rare x-ray finding. A twist occurs in the ascending colon that leads to a massively distended cecum. The apex of the volvulus points towards the left upper quadrant and urgent surgical decompression is needed due to the risk of perforation. All the extra information on abdominal x-ray interpretation can be found on our Scoop It page and the link is here. This talk has been provided by the Lester Gonda Link Collaborative Teaching Project.